Hello and welcome to my workshop. I'd like to show you the circuit board that is responsible for destroying a hard drive on one computer and a motherboard on another computer. Um, this is the NC Studio circuit board which is now removed. Today, hopefully, um, I am going to fit this Mac 3 breakout board into my CNC machine. I've already uploaded and paid for the license of Mac 3. As you'll see, license to Roger Clyde Webb. Um, you can download this directly off the internet. Um, when you do so, it'll come up here as a demo. Uh, you can actually connect it to a CNC machine or Miller machine or even a lathe. And um, it will allow you to operate 500 lines of code. Uh, it's limited to that uh, until you pay for the license. Uh, then the sky's the limit. Um, this program, Mac 3, is the industry norm uh, and really the benchmark for hobby CNC. So if you are looking at purchasing a CNC machine I do encourage you if there is a choice of whether the machine is equipped with Mac 3 or NC Studio I encourage you to Get the Mac 3 version. If they want supply you a machine with Mac 3, don't buy from them. Because to be quite honest with you, Mac 3 you can rely on. So what I'll do now, hopefully, is to try and sort out the wiring and convert it from NC Studio to uh, accept a Mac 3 breakout board. Um, I don't know how straightforward it's going to be. I've had a look at the wiring and it's all marked in Chinese. So it looks like I'm going to have some fun. Okay, so the old NC Studio cable came in and connected onto this. Now this is a breakout board from um, the supplier of the machine actually. Uh, unfortunately the hole down here for this to fit in uh, doesn't have um, a supply or a hole for the, for the supply for the um, 5 volt on here. So, um, which is a, a USB cable. So I've actually run a USB cable from my computer and I've got a, this is um, a parallel port, the old type um, uh, printer port cable is what these run on. Uh, they're 25 pin. Um, the NC Studio CAD runs on a 15 pin cable. Um, now this is the CAD obviously and this is the wiring that I have to actually connect into here. Now, it's actually all written in Chinese. There is a few X's and Y's, but nothing into, that relates to exactly what it is. So, um, now I do have a wiring diagram for this, but I don't for this. So, um, it may be that I'm going to have to undo all this wiring here and find out exactly where they go to determine uh, how to connect it into here. So uh, I didn't think it was going to be an easy fix uh, or easy matter of just unscrewing these and screwing them straight into that board. What I've also decided to do, I've got some uh, plastic here that I'm going to cut off. I'm going to mount this board to the plastic and then screw this plastic onto the actual metal bodywork of this and bring the cables through this vent hole straight into the 
into the board. I think that's going to work better for me. And uh, the cable's going to then be long enough and I don't think there's going to be any problem. Um, this is the um, new breakout board <coughs> that I'm actually going to install into the machine. Um, now, the, before I go and stick this in the machine, <coughs> I think it's very important for you to, or for anybody doing this same sort of job, especially changing from NC Studio to Mac 3, is um, well, the first thing to do is to download Mac 3 from their website <coughs> and follow the uh, installation. Uh, procedure as they uh, they demonstrate or advise. Now then, I think you can see the screen there. Let's get that out of the way. Now then, um, it's important to check to see whether um, your computer or uh, whether the system of your computer and certainly the parallel port is actually functioning as it should. Now it's a very simple procedure to do that. <clears throat> uh, you set up um, Mac 3 as um, set out in their um, manual and um, <clears throat> which is very simple really. Uh, you make sure that your port address, right, your parallel port number one address uh, is put into this window here. Um, I'm running XP and um, for this particular system that is the port address. I'll show you later on or there are plenty of people out there that um, show you exactly where you check that address from. But if I've got time I'll actually find it and put it in. But the important thing here is the motor outputs. Now the motor outputs um, and ports and pins. Very simply this uh, section here relates to all these little connections here. There's, this parallel port is 25 pins um, or 25 pins in the port. Now, so to be able to test the X, Y and Z axis um, you need to configure the ports and pins. Well, I'm using port number 1. So on this side here all these are port number 1. Um, I want to turn the axis on. So I check, I can Actually, uncheck, but uh, yeah, so you just check them what axis you want. If you want the fourth axis, you check that as well. Um, and in my case, um, I've also checked active low. Now, um, that may not be correct for your computer or your machine, uh, but it is for mine. Um, so just to check um, whether I have a signal coming at the back of the computer what I've done is, uh, and this is the normal configuration uh, for a, a, a standard system um, so on the x-axis the step is on pin number one port one so pin number one which is in pin number one now um, and the direction is on pin number two, which is the next one up. And with these 25, um, should we say, uh, connections or circuits or pins, um, number one is uh, the lower right hand side as you're looking at the back of the computer. And they go in sequence on the right hand side they go one two three four five and so on all the way up um, and then come down come down the other side in sequence now I don't know whether you can see this I think you should be able to see that voltmeter let's get something to 
prop it up. There we go, we use that. Now then, so what you do, <clears throat> you get an earth, which is anywhere on the casing, and I'm in pin number one, which is the x-axis uh, step, so I've pulled the pendant out, and I'm going on to the x-axis now. It's not that one, it's... Oh, press apply, <clears throat> get rid of that. And then you've got to press the reset down here because it's flashing red because nothing will happen unless you press that. So there we go. So then you go. You can see that it is altering. So that's telling me that there's a signal going through there out of the, the port on that line. So we've got the number two, which is... <coughs> the direction. Now see it's reading that's a little, probably a little bit of noise, a little bit of leak, but uh, you watch it now when I press. There we go. 3.87 0. Right, now then, uh, as you can see I've got this hooked up and I've got the little LED light up in there which tells me it's all live. <coughs> I'm taking an earth straight off the back of the computer, it doesn't matter, I could take it off the actual frame of this. Um, if you can see that. Now then. Um, so the x-axis is number three, four, so that's uh, step and direction and then step and direction of um, y and then step and direction of z. So here we go, this is step X so we've got a signal there direction and for yep so okay this is step for the Y and direction And then again the Z step and direction. So there you go, it's as simple as that really. So now I know that Mac 3, the program, the computer and the actual board is now all operating in synchronization with each other. Now all I've got to do is connect up the CNC machine to this circuit board. So that's next. Right, this is um, the NC Studio board and this is the new breakout board and what I'm doing I'm transferring the X, Y, Z axes over onto this board which is pretty straightforward because X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z is marked on here and uh, XXYY ZZ is marked on here. One is pull, one's direction. And then I've got a fault, 5 volt supply here as well. Not quite sure where that one goes. Because I've got a C5 volt there and a C5 volt there. So it's probably a common 5 volt, I'm not sure. But we'll soon find out. So. So far it hasn't been too bad. So we'll take the next one out of here. It's a little fiddly, but uh, nothing too, not, not a big drama yet anyway. Oh, might turn into a drama, now it's a different colour. Is it? Okay, so we've got uh, X step direction, Y step direction, and Z step direction. Last one to put in now is a 5 volt supply. Goes in that end one there. There's actually 
I could put this 5 volt supply in either that one or that one because they're both a supply of 5 volt. I've got this hooked in, this is up, so um, let's see if the axis works. Okay, so we'll switch it on and uh, see what happens, I suppose. I'm not expecting anything to be a mess, uh, it should work straight off. Um, we'll try the X first, X plus, ah look at that, X minus, uh, Y, and Y minus, and Z, Actually, just in jog mode there, I don't know whether you can tell a difference, but it's so much sweeter. Uh, there's a big difference just in the jog mode of operating this machine in Mac 3 to what there was in NC Studio. NC Studio was very abrupt and it sort of, you sort of hit the jog key, it was bang on straight away. This has, um, it seems to have a, a, a slow pick, a gradual pick up and a, a gradual drop off. Look, I'm going to show you in the X. See, it's a gradual start up and a gradual stop. But I like that, that's nice. Well, I'm very happy. <laughs> so now all we've got to do is um, get the spindle operating. Now, I think that might be a little bit more Problem, uh, have a few more problems because uh, in reading some of the documentation it's telling me that uh, from different sources it's telling me I've got to put a relay in that board already has three relays on it I don't know whether I can use those I probably can and um, it's a little bit more complex I think but uh, I mean if I wanted to use the machine now um, I could put a G-code in straight away and um, I could operate the, the spindle from down, down there. It's got a little uh, frequency generator um, that I just uh, set it to manual and I can set the speed whatever I want to. But it would be nice for um, Mac 3 to switch it on and off and um, vary the speed from the program. Um, I'm probably going to have a little bit more investigation about that. Um, but I think uh, for this video, I think uh, that'll do. I'm, I'm going to have to do this in several videos uh, because I want to show you everything that I'm doing. And um, I hope you've then enjoyed this video of the conversion of from NC Street Studio to Mac 3. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. So uh, if you have, please press like and um, subscribe or up in that top corner, as usual. Little red box, press on that, it will take you to my YouTube channel. I'm sure channel. there's something there that will interest you. So uh, from me now, it's bye from now.